Hello, welcome to my home studio. I'm in my basement and I've made it a makeshift studio. And this is my first video for you guys. So uh, here we go today. I'm gonna to be talking to you about what, a little bit about what's in your kit. Unfortunately, um, I made, when I first started making these kits up, there were like 19 students enrolled. So I made 20 kits and then an extra one because I wanted to make myself one. And then as it kept growing, we now have 25 students and I do not have myself a kit. So I've just kind of brought stuff home so that I can uh, start teaching you and giving you tutorials about what we're doing. So the first thing I want you to notice about what's in your kit is this big, this big board. This board I want you to use as your table. So. So you're gonna to have to find yourself somewhere in your, in your house, your kitchen table or dining room table, or if you've got a desk, a desk. But I want you to find your own little space where you could put this board. And this board is just for you to work on. It's so that you won't mess up your tables. Um, and if you have to do it on the floor, do it on the floor. Hopefully you can find a flat area that this board will work. So that's the first thing. And now this week, we're gonna be talking about how to make some stamps, how to make your own stamps, and uh, things you're gonna need for that that's in your kit. Okay, in your kit, you have several papers and some tracing paper and um, some plastic sheets. Now, we're not gonna use this right now, so, so don't work with that. We're not gonna use the tracing paper right now. You also have some thin plastic sheets that we're gonna make stencils with, but not right now. So don't, so set those aside. You also have some paper that's like an off white paper. That's gonna be for our, uh, when we do the uh, block prints. So set that aside, you're not gonna use those. Actually, they're for the colographs, I'm sorry. They're, they're the colograph paper. So you're gonna set that aside, you don't need that. And then, then you've got, these are for the block print. These papers like this and the, and the little construction papers, those are for the block prints. So set those aside. So what else is in your pack is I've gave each one of you a textured piece, like it's plastic and it's got a texture on it. So we're gonna be using those in the next week. And then you've got some really, really thin paper this thin paper I want you to use when you practice on stuff, especially right now when we're getting ready to do these stamps. So, so uh, you want that handy. And then you've got some kind of nice paper that's kind of thick and it's kind of nice. That's gonna be your final, you're gonna use one of those for your final print right now what we're getting ready to make, our, uh, our stamping assignment. So don't use it yet, use the practice sheets first. Okay, so we're gonna have that. And then also in your kit is scissors and some of the little foam. We're gonna be using that right now too. And then you've got watercolors. We're gonna start with watercolor. And then everybody has those little containers. This is not paint, this is ink. And it's real thick. And unfortunately, uh, I, I don't have lids. I brought home these little cups, but it didn't bring them lids, so I have to cover mine with, with foil. You always want to make sure that it's covered well. If your lid, you find that lid's falling off, put some foil on it. You want to keep the air off of this. You don't want that to dry up. And then you also have little popsicle sticks that I gave you that we're going to, I'll show you how to mix these colors with that. And then you've got spare cups that you're going to be using to, to mix, to blend colors. So we have that. So the first thing I want to show you right now, we are creating some stamps. So if you are able to, I want you to go outside sometime, if your parents will let you, or maybe with your parents, I want you to go outside and find some leaves. And then with those leaves, I want you to, to soak them now hopefully you've got some kind of a little container or a bowl that you can soak those in. And the reason we want to soak them is so that they're pliable. We're going to make leaf stamps today. This is what we're going to do today. So I'm going to 
my, my leaf has been soaking in the water. So I'm gonna take it and I'll put it on some paper towels so it's not drenching wet. So I'm just gonna just dab it so it's not drenching wet. And then I'm gonna use this as a stamp. So I'm gonna be showing you that. So when you start working, I need you to have some kind of a container that you could put water in. You're gonna use your foam brush for this. This is gonna be easier. Everybody's got a foam brush in your kit. So we're gonna use that. And then you always wanna have some paper towels. So if you've got paper towels, use your paper towels. If you've got um, an old towel, don't get a towel out of your good towels. Your, your parents will kill you. So, so don't get a good towel. But if you've got an old towel, ask your, ask your mom, ask your, your parent for if you've got a, a, a towel you can use for your, when you're working. Because I didn't put a towel in your kit and I didn't put paper towels in your kit. So you want to, uh, to get those. And then now next, I'm gonna show you how to make these prints. Okay, so here's what I'm, I'm starting with right now. I've got my leaves soaking. I've got my water that I'm gonna be using with the watercolor. I got the watercolor paper and I got my scratch paper, my, my practice paper, and I got my paper towel. And then I have another paper towel if I get too much water on my, my brush. So I'm going to take one of these leaves, and I'm gonna dab it. Now I'm gonna take this leaf and I'm gonna put apply some watercolor to it. I don't want a lot of water on here, or it's not gonna turn out if it's too wet. So I wanna make sure that the watercolor is, uh, and I can use this to paint this on. I wanna make sure the watercolor's kinda not too wet, because if it's too wet, then it's not gonna turn out very well. And then I'm gonna take that where I just painted it, and I'm just gonna put it on my paper and press it down. Now if, there's, if the watercolor is too watery, it's not gonna show up very well. But it's it actually kinda cool, and the better paper is gonna show up better. But that's really cool because it's leaving these little spots, so it's really, really nice. Now let's see, I'm gonna do it again with, with not as much water in my paint. dab that and when you're doing this when you, especially when you do your final one which we're going to do more than just these leaves before that's over with but when you're doing your final one I want you to be thinking about patterns and you're also going to overlay you're going to be doing some overlaying you're going to be doing some layers but uh, really be thinking about patterns and choosing your colors wisely now see I didn't have as much water on that one so it's a little bit brighter In fact, I'm not even dipping my brush in, in water right now because there's so much water in that brush. Now, I do want to do a different color. Let's do blue. There's probably still some red left in that leaf. So it might look kind of purple. Because red and blue make purple. Let's do this one right here. See? You see a little purple in there. Now, as I keep doing that, the red will be gone and it'll just be blue.
Oh, see, that came out really good. Now I want to try, let me clean that off. I'm going to try a different, a different leaf. I, I picked more than one leaf. I got this really big leaf here. Actually, I got four different kind of leaves here I found. Outside. Just tell. I could put different colors on here too. Maybe I want to put mix it. Maybe I want to get a put a little red on that leaf too. So don't 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 get too much water though. Watch the amount of water in there. I don't want it too watery. see what it looks like cool that is really cool I love how it shows that texture that is really cool Hey, I put green in there. Green, red, and blue mixed together doesn't make a very pretty color, but, but that's still pretty cool. Another thing I wanted to show you is this little foam thing that I gave you. Now, what I can do with that is I can cut a shape out of it. Let's see. I think I'll cut like a diamond shape out of it. It's not perfect, but that's okay. You don't have to be perfect. take this I could use these little pieces too they're off a little bit now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put some paint on it I'm going to show you another way to do this too but right now I'm just going to do this let's see now it's a sponge just like your brush is But I put some paint on it and then press it down. And now I've made a little stamp that way too. So you can make an interesting shape. Maybe something a little bit better than what I made there. Let's get some green in here. It's teeny tiny, that's okay. I get enough paint on it. I don't even have to uh, put more paint on it. It's got a lot of paint in it now. You could make a cool shape with that. That's that's cool. Okay. So this is my practice paper, and this is this. I'm just using this to see what kind of things I can come up with and stamp. Okay, another thing that's in your kit 
are these crayons. Now I want you to use these crayons for something a little bit different. So what I, what I need you to do with the crayons, and then we're gonna use this texture that you have in your kit. So what I need you to do with the crayons is to take this peeling off, take the paper off the crayon so you can just have the crayon. Okay, so now th this, what I wanna show you how to use this is um, with your texture, your plastic texture, and I, and I uh, took off the, the paper off the crayons. That, that was quite a chore. So that's gonna take a little while. But once it's done, then, then this is what's cool about this. You're gonna take your paper on top of that texture and you're gonna rub, rub your crayon. Careful not to not to rip your paper. Just gonna leave it a nice little texture on your paper. This is why you take the paper off so it can use the whole crayon. Otherwise, you'd have to sit here and do this which you can, but I like the effect of having just a little bit versus that all that. It just depends on what you want. You know, you can, you can still do that and you just see how it looks different. Now, when you have something like that, you have that rubbing, you have that texture, and then you want to try to print on it, the crayon actually acts as a resist, so it's not going to, uh, your paint's not gonna adhere where the crayon is very well. But I'm gonna try, I'm gonna play here. So here's my, one of my leaves, let me get one of these leaves out again. Let me get this one, I got a different leaf here, I'm gonna get out. Use this one, this one's got holes in it and everything. Damn it. Now I'm going to take this leaf, paint the leaf, paint this side. And then we're going to put that on there. So we'll see how that looks on top of that. A lot of times, if, if you ever look at a, a print materials, print an artist that does printmaking, they, they tend to like to do layers. You get some pretty interesting things by doing stuff on top of stuff. So, so then we can do that. On top of my rubbing. I really like the way that, that you could see the ribbing of that leaf in there. It really makes a cool texture. That's pretty cool. Okay, so that's what I want you guys to do. I want you to play and come up with something using these little stamps, stamps that you make, leaves, or if you can find something else. So that's it for now. That's a lot, and that's a lot for you to play with this week.